Okay, we have our 10, interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity, x to the s minus one, e minus x over one plus e minus two x dx. Okay, one thing to notice on this is you could see this in a bunch of different forms, but if you just multiply in like e to the x, this part's gonna go away. Or you could write this like with caution, the denominator, you could have a substitution and you could see like ln x in it. But to get started with it, I'm just gonna use it in this form and try to get a general formula for this in terms of S. And so what I'm gonna to wanna to do on this is use geometric series, just thinking of it if we have a one here, trying to put this into the form of something like one over one minus X. For this, we have the geometric series formula, which is just gonna be the sum from zero to infinity, X to N, X to the N, when absolute value of X needs to be less than one for this to converge. So let me take our expression here and try to put it in this form. We'll write it as one minus minus e minus two x, just because we have a plus there. And then this right here is gonna be my input into this formula. So what we're gonna need for this to converge is just the absolute value of minus e minus two x needs to be less than one. The minus isn't gonna matter inside the absolute value, but notice this is gonna be no problem with our bounds always positive zero to infinity. Technically at zero, it's gonna be at one, but we don't really care about the endpoints. So what that's gonna allow me to do is we can take this right here and plug it back into our integral. We still have the numerator untouched. So first we'll have this x to the s minus one, e minus x. And then for this, I'm just gonna write it a little bit differently because let's separate out this minus one and bring it to the end. So when I do that, we'll have minus one, to the end. And then with exponent properties, let's distribute the n in here. We'll have e minus 2xn. And then let's distribute all this stuff in to get it all as one term. But now for e to the minus x and this right here, we've got the same base. So I'll combine this together. We have minus x in common. So I can actually write this as minus 2n plus 1 to the x dx. And then let's just swap the order of the integral and the sum. We're fine to do it because we've got our absolute convergence over here. But then what you'll notice here is this is almost set up like a Laplace transform. This piece right here is a constant, so I can just bring this outside of the integral, but still within the sum. And then to make it clear, let's just do something else with the 2n plus 1 here. Let's make like a temporary substitution on this. I can call this, let's just call this here t. I probably, I would use s, but we already used s, so we'll use t for our input on the Laplace transform. So writing it out like this, what we're gonna have here is the Laplace transform of just this piece, x to the s minus one, where t is gonna be this two n plus one value. We can just substitute that back in later. Now for a Laplace transform of this form, we have this formula. I switched the variables around. I know the variables are kind of confusing. Sorry, I should have probably changed it in the beginning, but writing it with the variables the way we have it, our formula for something like Laplace of x to the s is gonna be gamma of s plus one over t of s plus one, because t is gonna be our input here. So if what we're looking at here is Laplace of x to the s minus one, we just need to adjust this. Sorry, there should be an equal sign there. So everything should be one less here. So this is just gonna be gamma of s over t to the s. But now let's take it and put it back in terms of n with this t value. So if we do that and plug in n plus one, we're gonna have gamma of s 2n plus one, all to the s. So we can take this value here, put it back into the sum. That's all we've, we're all set with this integral now. So what's gonna happen is we have here the sum from n equals zero to infinity, minus one to the n, and all this stuff, gamma of s over 2n plus one to the s. But now gamma of s is just gonna be a constant with respect to n, so I can rewrite this again. We can, have the, we can bring the gamma of s out front of this whole thing, and then we're just gonna have this sum, and this is just gonna be minus one to the n over two n plus one to the s. And now at this point, I don't think I can simplify this any further, but this thing here is in exactly the form for the Dirichlet beta function at s. Not to be confused with the beta function we usually see in terms of an integral, so we can just put this together and for the solution of this, we're just gonna have gamma of s, Dirichlet beta of s, and that's it. And so one way you may see this in terms of a definition, just rearranging it, if we divide off the gamma of s, we could write it as, we could write it as the Dirichlet beta function being this integral times just one over gamma of s. And so just writing out a few terms of this, now two n plus one, this is always gonna be an odd number. 
when we start at zero, the first, this is gonna be positive because minus one to the zero is just one. So it's just gonna be like one over one to the S minus one over three to the S plus one over five to the S minus one over seven to the S on and on to infinity. And so just notice it's really similar to the Riemann zeta function and the eta function, just with alternating signs and all odd terms on it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.